That's a catchy number. That's into space from the great people at StreamYard. And this is a new edition of Chicks with Dig brought to you by Boxing Asylum. With me today, Joe Kennedy, to discuss what had transpired on Saturday. Uh, Chantel Cameron taking a majority decision victory over Katie Taylor as the eyes of Ireland wept. Uh, rough fight for Joe, but you know, greatness courts failure. And, uh, I admire her for taking on such a challenge, but a lot of people, myself included thought that, uh, Katie was taking uh, a, a more difficult fight than even the Serrano fight with this one, uh, proving to be true as she was, uh, just, um, just kind of outgunned out, uh, outpowered outsized by Chantel Cameron. Uh, what, what were your thoughts as the fight was transpiring? Yeah, uh, good, good. Good to be back on, Jamadi. Uh, yeah, it was it was a really great fight. I think that's kind of <clears throat> in the post mortem back home in Ireland and and amongst the boxing fraternity. I think that's being lost a little bit. Uh, I think it was a really really good quality scrap between two two women that are at the top of the fight game in, in the women's side of the sport. Anyway, um, I think it was probably a step too far for Hit Katie. Um, you know. Two really good fighters. They say a, a good big one beats a good little one, and it kind of transpired that way. I thought that um, Katie was punished every time she tried to close the distance. Cameron was catching her with the jab, and uh, whenever Katie did get inside, I thought Cameron let off some really nice uppercuts as well, which made Katie a little bit hesitant. And I just thought her work was a lot cleaner than Katie's work as well. It was a very close fight. Having said that, um, I think scorecards are probably a little bit closer than. Most people would have had them at home, probably, you know, due to the effect of the crowd and Katie being a hometown fighter and her homecoming and stuff. The crowd was really behind her. Uh, Conor McGregor was, you know, I think he was doing a, a, bump, a bump of coke every time Katie landed a punch or something like that by the looks of it because he was all over the place. Um, and it just seemed like the whole crowd was behind her. It seemed like a great occasion. And look, it was a step too far for a really great fighter, but I don't think any shame in, in how she went about the business and how she went about her loss, it was definitely, a, um, you know, no shame in losing to a quality fighter like Cameron, who's a bigger girl, quality operator at that weight, undisputed world champion at that weight. Um, you know, this will knock down to Katie's reputation, I don't think, going forward. No, I, I just, I think she reached for uh, something uh, something great and just came up short. It was um, just, just a difficult fight for her because... Um, I think Chantel Cameron has uh, better boxing ability than Amanda Serrano. Uh, she might not be as good of an inside fighter, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, but she is a better boxer and she's much bigger than Amanda. Um, so, so my feeling coming into this was just, man, if, if Amanda was roughing her up like that at times, uh, who, you know, honestly is still making featherweight at this point in time. So we'll look at her that way. So if, you know, Katie was getting roughed up by a featherweight, what's this 140 pounder going to do? That's big, solid, great amateur uh, background, just a solid fighter. And, uh, and, and there it was um, yeah. talking about the rematch, Joe. I, I, I just, I, I, it would be an incredible victory on Katie's part, but I just think it's foolish to take it. Your thoughts. Yeah, I'd agree. You know, I think if there was one thing you would think that Katie could do different, that would help her win the fight this time around. Um, you would say that she'd need to improve her footwork and if there's one thing that's not going to happen between now and, and a rematch is her footwork's not going to get any better I think that's, you know, given her age and the, 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 the stage of her career she's at her legs are, are, are definitely on the slide and I think, you know <clears throat> I've been thinking about this today whether, you know, an earlier version of Katie might have had more success against Cameron and maybe she would have had the re required footwork get in and out quick enough land her shots and not catch the jab coming in or not catch an uppercut if she stayed a little bit too long inside. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't think I can say for sure whether that would have happened or not. I think that, um, you know, and I, I just don't, I, it doesn't bode well for, for, for a rematch, I guess, more importantly. I don't think that Katie's legs are going to get any better. I think it would be a, a repeat, a rinse repeat of, of the first spot. I can see uh, just Cameron kind of, winning the rounds behind her jab and right hand and, 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 and kind of using her, um, just her fundamentals kind of, and her size to, 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 to win the rounds against Katie. So yeah, I don't, I don't feel great about the rematch at all. I, I think um, consensus in Ireland is that she doesn't really need it. Um, and even if it's at 135, bringing Cameron down, I don't think it's going to give her the, 
the juice needed to, to get it over the line. I think Katie should probably concentrate on, on, on maybe um, defending those lightweight titles. Um, you know, I think, I don't know if you noticed, but her standing up between rounds as well. There, there's talk, talk in Ireland that maybe that's because um, her calf muscles can't, um, can't function if she, if she keeps having to sit down and stand back up 10 times during a fight. If her calves are that bad, uh, you can only imagine that how inhibited uh, her footwork must be, you know. So I think um, it doesn't bubble well out for, for a rematch, yeah. Yeah, good catch there. Kind of curious about that. Um, and it, they're talking about actually doing the rematch at 135. I mean, if Cameron can safely squeeze down to that weight, I, I think it's kind of an open shut case, like you said. So um, in, in taking that rematch, really the only thing going for uh, for Taylor, and that might be that the, the five pounds less actually helps her um, uh, as opposed to Cameron, and maybe Cameron won't have the legs that she had. Um, mm-hmm. Do you, do you think that the white weight might play any difference, or or is it just completely inconsequential, and Cameron can squeeze those last five no problem? Yeah, it's a tough. I I I, I can't say I, I I'm a familiar enough with Cameron to say she she could make it. I I think she campaigned previously at welterweight, so you know it's quite a drop if she started that campaign up there to, to get down to one thirty five eventually. So I don't know whether she can't make it safely or not, but um. You know, she's not got things like, like you know, she's not at the end of her career or, you know, got age against her side. Do you think that the, the, the cut might be overly prohibitive? I think that she, she probably could cut it. And if she did cut it reasonably well, then I think Katie would be in trouble. She, you know, she didn't seem like the kind of 140 that was bursting out of the way, you know. So I, that's why I kind of think that she probably would make it. Yeah, I'm just checking here to see. Where if uh, earlier in a career where Cameron might have fought, let's uh, her first 10 rounder in 2018, she weighed in at 134 for that one, so she was weighing oh, in we 134 go. there. So, yeah. I don't know when the last time she did it 2019, she was still at 130, she was still at 135. She fought McGee, she fought McGee, at, she fought McGee at 140. Yep, so okay, somewhere in there. She moved up, so it might not be a problem whatsoever. And maybe that was the difficulty for her at that point in time was just snagging a title. I mean, yeah. Uh, and and Katie got. I mean, as you see, I mean, that wasn't a fight that she would just kind of take willingly. It was it was worth it in its own way to kind of build it, take it to this Irish homecoming, and make some money out of it. Because three or four years ago, it, it just might have just stomped the the legend of Katie Taylor uh, before it really had a chance to get going. You know, Cameron is that kind of fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, so good on you, but you know, I, I will say Katie is beloved there. It, it, you, yeah. it just shines through that. She's a very special, uh, person to all the people of Ireland. And I think to the women of Ireland, especially, uh, for, you know, knowing what she went through, uh, to, to just to be able to box. Um, and, uh, it was no easy road. And, uh, and I think they appreciate that. And that brings a different audience in, but something, the, I think the scene there, Joe, is going to be much improved because of Katie Taylor. And there was a little promo video, you know, beforehand uh, on Saturday, and they showed her working the pads with young kids, uh, both girls and boys, in the gym, and uh, just really engaging them. And you and you can see that she enjoys it. It wasn't forced, you know, anything like that. Um, and, and it seems like her impact on Irish boxing is going to be felt regardless of your gender for years to come. A hundred percent. Yeah, she is. Uh, I think Rob has mentioned on the asylum pod that she's, she's nearly that godlike status in Ireland. She really has. I think she's been about the most popular sports person of the year there, like six or seven years. You know, she was just, she kind of transcends the gender transcends ages. Everybody just loves Katie Taylor. She's kind of got that, um, you know, there's no cobwebs in the closet in terms of, you know, um, scandals or, or she's never acting up in, in the public eye. She just is a really respectful person and goes about her business really well. And she's just been at the top of her sport for so long that, and yeah, she's just universally adored. And she's definitely, you know, paved the way for, for women's boxing in, the, in Ireland. And, you know, there's a, <clears throat> there's a host of younger fighters who kind of have been following in, in her footsteps a little bit. Um, and hopefully, you know, as if, you know, if, if it transpires that Katie does take the 135 rematch with Cameron and Cameron takes all her titles and Katie kind of bears out of the sport, um, you know, 
shortly thereafter. I think there is a couple of fighters coming through that hopefully will be able to take on the mantle and, uh, and and keep the, keep keep Irish boxing, you know, especially on the women's side, going from strength to strength. Um, uh, in the past past couple of months, I just read uh, Kelly Harrington's book, um, and if you're not familiar with Kelly, she won a gold at Tokyo, just gone uh, in the lightweight category, and she basically you know came to boxing late but fought at lightweight kind of in, in katie's shadow a little bit but you know katie's development and the eyes she brought on the sport meant that you know girls like kelly and, and and other girls behind her basically got the good benefit of all the additional coaching all the additional money that was being poured into the sport uh, and they all got to train alongside the the men's boxers in the uh, high performance academy back in Dublin, and so the the quality of amateurs coming through on on both sides, the men and women's side, but particularly the women's side, is, is really really good. And look, Kelly is unfortunately, you know, she's thirty three. She's not going to probably. I think she seems pretty satisfied in, in in the amateur career she has, and she works in a hospital alongside, and she likes that life, but. Um, there is one little uh, younger fighter called Amy O'Rourke. She's 26. She's called Baby Canelo. And there's big talk of her maybe having the, the, the required skills to, to turn over and do something in the pro. She's got age on her side. She does have a, a long amateur career. Of, she's over 100 fights now, but she's been you know competing at the top of the amateur game for a while. And yeah, there's talk of her maybe you know, carrying the mantle. Uh, it's a pity that Kelly Harrington's a little bit older because she's fought, if you look at her amateur record, she's fought like Hannah Douche, Caroline Dubois, Pockenen, um, tons of really, really quality uh, amateur and, and, and subsequently professional fighters. And she's some really good wins in her record, but she just doesn't seem to have um, the backing or the will to kind of turn pro. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully Baby Canelo can kind of can, can, can take on the Katie mantle and, and, and keep the sport going because Katie's really um, gotten it to amazing places and it would be a shame to kind of, you know, uh, let that momentum go along with her career should it be ended soon enough, you know? Well, and I think that it might be some of these gals are coming a little bit late because when the door was open for them. But if you look at it now, all these young kids in the gym and things like that, I, I think you'll see some more uh, youngsters that are meddling early in their uh in in their uh in their days you know uh you know 18 ish you know uh, per usual and then turn pro before they're 25 and kind of go yeah. a far more normal route and it'll be interesting to see as that door's open and i just hope that everything with the olympics gets resolved and that doesn't put a damper on it because i i kind of think there are some good things happening in amateur boxing but if we lose the olympics that's going to be yeah, it's going to be very detrimental to the sport, um, but, but we'll see on that front. It yeah. was um, as far as the, now as far as Chantel Cameron goes. Say she doesn't take on Katie Taylor again. Um, what wh what should she do? Should she, uh, she said she's kind of tired of defending her titles. Um, does she McCaskill still holds a couple of belts? Does she go up there for a rematch at one forty seven? Try to grab something uh, at at a higher weight. Um, do, does she even go further than that? Uh, I think uh, Natasha Jonas still has uh, uh, belts up there as well. Uh, I, I, there's, I mean, there's a few different directions that she can go if she's looking to add to her mantle rather than keep defending those belts. Yeah, I, 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 I would like the. I think she'd beaten Caskill um, in, in a rematch. I think that she's um you know having last couple of times i've seen mccaskill she seems to regress a little bit she's a bit sloppier in her work and i think i think cameron would, would would beat her pretty hardly in a rematch i think that um the jonas fight would be interesting she's jonas would be coming up a bit in weight right she'd be again probably so probably have to overcome the size difference there um yeah it's a tough one i think um it's if the if the Katie Taylor fight rematch doesn't come off, then yeah, she might be not struggling for an opponent. But yeah, there's not one that immediately jumps out to mind. I think probably McCaskill would be the one, uh, since she was on comms for the Taylor Taylor Cameron fight as well. It, maybe that would make sense. Um, but you know, I, I, there's no one that you can really pick and think that oh yeah, that's that's a natural opponent for, for Cameron and, and one that would cause her trouble. She seems to be, um, you know head and shoulders above the rest at 140. 
She is, and, and we'll see if anybody comes up there. You just wonder if she'll do one of those crazy devil weight class jumps that happens in women's boxing from time to time and and yeah. uh, do, do something on the crazier end of the spectrum. Um, Mayer just moved up to 135. I don't know if she wants to jump up another one. I think she's, regardless, she's trying to get that Taylor fight at 135 if Cameron doesn't get it. Um, mm-hmm. I see no reason for Baumgartner to, to leave 130 pounds right now. Um, she's kind of making it her own division. Americans probably still make it if they want to make that fight. And interestingly, and we'll jump ahead a, a little bit, and the part of the fallout from this is Amanda Serrano says that the rematch is with Katie Taylor is all uh, but dead at this point in time. Um, so we can kind of scrap that off. Uh, Amanda taking kind of a weak fight on the Jake Paul undercard in August, August 5th, I believe, uh, t- uh, given Heather Hardy a rematch, uh, mm. who she uh, beat and took some featherweight belts off of some years ago. And after that which that I... Part? I, I swear to God, Hardy popped positive for something she after did, that yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. The, nothing's worse than getting the shit kicked out of you while you're on performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> That's yeah. an embarrassment. Um, so uh, now we got a 40-something-year-old Hardy, hopefully cleaning off drugs. Um, Amanda has seen her better days, but I, I just can't see it going any other direction than Serrano uh, taking the first one. I mean, you were at the, like you were at that first one. I mean, that was a I, one of Amanda's stronger performances of her career. I, she just wouldn't let up. It was she got everything but the stoppage in that fight. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I think I'll be picking her for the stoppage in that next fight because I remember by the end of that fight, um, you were almost thinking it was you'd want Heather t- Heather taken out of her misery by the end of the fight. Amanda was really pulling on the the punishment. Um, I think if that was one of those fights, if it was you know three minute rounds again, it probably would have ended. Probably in the first half of the fight. Um, there was a couple rounds where if, if there was a minute, she would have been toast. I think like the second or the third round, she was just getting freaking battered around. I mean, yeah. it, it wouldn't have taken any more seconds on the clock for her to be toast. Yeah, yeah. I think even a, a, a more, um, you know, liver lily ref probably would have stopped it as well. You know, I think it was, it was, it was one of those. I mean, my wife were, were a little bit uncomfortable watching towards the end. But yeah, I, I t- it's just a tick over, like you said, a pretty easy fight, I think. Um, Hardy, you know, obviously she got just a lot of combat sports background, right? She's, you know, probably one of those gym rats who just stays around the gyms, but um, I don't think she'll have anything really to, to, to trouble uh, Serrano. Um, I think Amanda, she almost needs, um, she needs, a, she really needs a new dance partner. You know, if, 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 if the Taylor rematch has gone by the wayside and, and, and Taylor's focus is now elsewhere which it seems to be you know i think that amanda really needs someone to come through and, and, and offer her something she needs to get another big fight here in new york um i wouldn't like to see her her career kind of just taper off and end up you know going out with a, in a whimper against the locks ahead of hardy she's a better that, fighter than that. that's why i like the Baumgartner fight and it's fight she, there's yeah. no guarantee to win but i think 130 would probably be a really comfortable weight for amanda right now and mm-hmm. and it's a fight that they can sell um we uh uh, who let's see here. Uh, Andrew Thicket said, "Feels like Serrano keeps being showcased by being on Jake Paul cards, but for what purpose? Who or what is her target?" And she does actually have a really good draw with that Puerto Rican crowd in New York, does, um, yeah. as you know. They 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 yeah. they, they, they dig her, and, and yeah. they're, they're lacking right now in uh, in big names uh, on the men's side. Ever since Miguel Cotto retired, everyone's been a burnout. You know, Berlanga. Uh, there's high hopes for him, and all he does is bite people. I don't think people are going to leave <laughs> the parade for that. Um, no. So it's in. So right now, I just uh, so it, there, there definitely is a good audience with her. That's that's why Jake's doing it, and uh, she's a quality fighter. I also think that's why Jake's doing it. But as you said, she needs a good dance partner, and uh, I don't know if I favor her in the fight. But it's a her and Baumgartner. That's a damn good style matchup. That that would be another one of these. You match them at the well at the at the top of the women's sport. You match them together. It produces the goods. Uh, nothing has really failed on that front. This side of uh, Cameron McCaskill, and I still think something was wrong with Jess. She looked weird. Yeah, I think she's looked weird in a couple of last performances. I'm not like not, I haven't been massively impressed since the breakout performance, to be honest. You know, um, I, she kind of seems like she's uh, who, who's her trainer. Um, uh, oh, you're Corona? killing me. Is it Karoma? Might, I think you might be right. For some reason, yeah. I want to say Rogier, but I knew I was wrong. I think you're right. It's K Karoma. 
um, you know, it's like just I just never uh, the, you can never see a development from her fight by fight. It seems to be the same, you know, sloppy rushing in female Sean Porter almost style. But I don't know. Um, yeah, I haven't been massively impressed with her since the breakout fight, to be honest. Yeah, it's um, it, it just some her she uh, her, her rhythm really threw break us off, mm. um, and it's and you kind of wonder if it was just catching the right fighter at the right time. You know, styles make fights, and the one I constantly go back to that is it's uh, is Vernon Forrest versus Ricardo Mayorga. Everything about that that matchup says that that Forrest should blast him out of there with an uppercut. Didn't mm-hmm. happen in two fights. Sometimes someone just has your number. And it makes no rational sense um, whatsoever. Yeah, and Vernon Forrest had Shane Mosley's number in pretty sim- similar fashion as well, right? Yeah, he yeah he dropped Shane. He, he was like the only person who dropped Mosley, you know, uh, very deep into his career for years later. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and then uh, you know he can't seem to put down freaking Ricardo Mayorga for for all he's worth. I mean, eventually you know you eventually crack Mayorga. That's the one thing about him. So, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, a fight that I watched uh, recently that came actually before we move on to this, let's hit this Andrew Thicket question. Don't want to get lost in it. And it, just an interesting question. Since who was the bigger star in Ireland, Katie Taylor or Conor McGregor? Obviously, I wouldn't know uh, that personally. You you would obviously have better insight into that. But man, Conor McGregor's kind of his mouth built him up more than his ability to fight. He's a very good fighter, but not as good as you would as he thinks he is. Yeah, like I, I think um, it, it depends on what you mean by star. You know, it, it is a star a person who you know takes columns in a newspaper or minutes on a, on a news uh, reel, or is it you know the person who's top of their sport? And for me, Taylor has been top of her sport for a lot longer. Has probably been more widely recognised as such. Whereas Conor McGregor is probably the bigger personality and bigger celebrity and is in the news more and probably dominates more column inches than, than Katie Taylor. But I think in terms of a sports star, um, I think Katie Taylor would be considered a bigger sports star than Conor McGregor. And she's also just a much more liked character. Conor McGregor is a bit like, he's a bit marmite in Ireland. People either really love him and are fully in or else people kind of don't like him at all. Um, uh, it's kind of one or the other, you know, whereas Katie Taylor, it's a little bit like Bob Marley. You're not going to find many people who don't like her or want to shut her off the TV, you know? Well, yeah. You won't even find Katie Taylor in a pub, let alone punching some chick in the pub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the tip of the iceberg with McGregor as well. Like the, the libel laws in, the, in, in Ireland are really strong. Uh, if, if, if half of the stuff that is believed to be pushed under the rug was true with regards to McGregor, um, you know, he's, he's a total scumbag. Yeah, I uh, he uh, and I'll tell you what, man, Connor without the beard, uh, he, he doesn't look nearly as intimidating. He looks like some uh, dick who's trying to sell you an adjustable rate mortgage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got like uh, he's just got serious, like the energy off him is so intense, and it's obviously like chemically fueled as well. But there's also like there's a vulnerability in him as well. It's like it's hard to it's like watching a car crash in slow motion. It's kind of hard to take your eyes off, but it's also not enjoyable to watch it all. Um, <laughs> yeah, like that, that's his whole life now, and kind of in, in in the public sphere is just being laughed at and making a show of himself, and then you know his his hardcore fans kind of backing him up. But yeah, he he's such a terrible person that yeah. he made me a fan of a Chechen in a sport I don't even really pay attention to, and I don't care for Chechens whatsoever. But I love Khabib because he beat the shit out of McGregor. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw any of the, the fights after that fight, like in, in, in Vegas, but the Irish fan base really, um, they found their level that night against the Dagestanis, let's just say. <laughs> oh good times oh god those are some rough bastards but anyway yeah um going to a place that's not so rough a place uh where they don't even have a standing army uh but it's beautiful <laughs> talking about costa rica and uh, what also is lovely is your costa valle 
uh, and her uh, her boxing not too bad either. Joe, uh, good win here over Jessica Basuto Salazar. Uh, but more interesting is this is the third consecutive undefeated fighter that Valle has knocked off. Um, if, if there's any d- division that's kind of stacked south of where we've been looking, it's minimum weight. You got Sanisa Estrada. Um, and uh, Jessica Neri can make that weight. She uh, weighed in a 108 for Kim Cl- the Kim Kim Clavel fight. Um, so you got those three that could that could go at it. And I um, I'm just absolutely stoked about this gal. I mean, she is putting in some great performances after suffering a few early career defeats. I know you saw this one, but her combinations are are great. She throws some clever stuff like a one two one to keep her opponent mm-hmm. back and up. Uh, she is not without. I wouldn't write her off against either Neri or Estrada. This this chicken box. Yeah, I don't know. If, I, I I really like the short left hook she she started throwing as well. It, it developed over the fight. Um, she kind of kept um, she kept, kept kept catching that girl. I can't remember her name, uh, Bustos or something like that. Um, kept catching with that short left hook as well, which was really really nice. Snap her head across. That was that was something that I really liked. And I think she just had really good fundamentals. Just strong footwork. Seemed to really uh, put her shots together well. A little bit loopy with her right hand. I don't know whether that was just to try and get around the guard of that Bustos girl. Um, but I think I when I when I watched the fight, I enjoyed it, and I immediately went and watched uh, Estrada's latest fight just because it's it's that it's an automatic matchup that you're thinking when you're watching that fight. Uh, I think the two of them were really really talented fighters at, at that weight, and it should be a really good fight. I think it's like the conventional Val, uh, the conventional Yacosta Val versus like super talented but slightly unconventional uh Sinisa Estrada sometimes gets her feet tied up sometimes you know throws her combinations in, in, in strange places but uh, kind of uses talent and uses natural fighting ability and yeah I think that'd be a great fight between, between those two I, I think I'd I think I'd, 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 I'd shade um Estrada just on the hand speed and probably the power I think she seemed to have a little bit more pop than uh, than Vaya but I think Vaya will, uh, she'll be there all night. And she, uh, if she's managed to, to catch her with some of those short left hooks, and obviously uh, also the Rupert girl, the German girl who Estrada just fought, she was catching her with some overhand rights coming in as well. I think that, uh, you know, Estrada is not flawless from a defensive point of view. So it makes that fight really interesting. Yeah, I, w- I would also say that Sinisa has better feet. She, she honestly might have the best footwork in all of women's boxing. Um, but, um, yeah, it, Valle is 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 a is a heck of a fighter, but she did lose to Ruprick. That's one of those two losses. Yeah, that she said. And triangle theories don't exactly work, but she did lose to Tiny Tina, um, who, who who gave a decent account of herself. But I mean, it just clearly outclassed against Estrada. I mean, this was back at the end of March, but um, it, best as I can remember, just Sinisa doing her thing. She she boxed when she wanted to, fought when she wanted to. Uh, put her punches together here and there, clipped off single shots. She did get caught here and there, but you kind of wonder if she just doesn't worry about getting popped. I mean, this is a gal that was in the gym with boys when she was young, so she might not have too much concern if she gets touched here and there. Yeah, she she seems like a very offensively minded fighter, you know. And I think yeah, you're right. Just, uh, when you're when you're that kind of fighter, there's no way of swimming 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 without getting wet, so to speak. So yeah, I th- I just you know. It, it, it just shows you the pockets are where you cost the buy will probably work as well. Um, but I think she'll, I think she'll probably offer more than, than, than tiny Tina, um, just going off that last fight. Um, but I think Sinisa Strata is still head and shoulders probably above, uh, above everyone at that rate. I think we talked to her better a couple of times in the show before, because yeah, she just, she just uses class, which, 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 Probably the other girls don't, but I think that Yukasa Valle will, will hopefully be a sterner test than she's probably had before. And then yeah. who was there after that? Then you know that's a, that's the only other thing about these weights is that if we get that Yukasa Valle fight over the line, then Neri, just Neri, that, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. she's a good she's a really good fighter. That uh, the uh, the win over uh, I think she beat uh, Jessica yeah. Bott. Well, yeah, and she beat Jessica Bott before that. I think she might have been coming off a loss a few before that, but uh, that's a good back to back in that one. And 
and it, she's kind of ranked in some of the places in the pound for pound, and I'm kind of curious about it. I mean, that Clavel fight was a fantastic performance. Just a, a lot of clever things that she was doing in there that that that's good boxing. I don't care if it's men's boxing or women's boxing. It was just good boxing. And I, I think maybe if I could kind of write up what I'd like to see, maybe see Estrada against Valle, and then uh, Neri, if she wants to campaign at 108 where she's got those belts, regardless of where she's uh, weighing in at, uh, uh, could fight, uh, uh, God, why am I forgetting her name? Sinisa beat her, uh, some years back. Um, she's got a, she's got a title. God, it's going to kill me. But anyway, at 108, it, it's going to kill me that I forgot that name, but the fight that, and then she'll have a comparable opponent with Sinisa. And then at that point in time, uh, winners can fight each other, whether that's a rematch or otherwise. But I think in those lower weights, you, you've kind of isolated the four best fighters in the divisions at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, it's just a case of moving up and down for those guys, a couple of pounds here and there. Yeah, and it, well, I mean, I mean that is literally a couple of pounds. So, you know, uh, you're going from uh, from uh, minimum weight up to light fly. That is that's three pounds. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, I uh, it's interesting. It's just what's kind of good about women's boxing is there's so few dance partners that you're these fights kind of are forced to happen. They find a way to get around the politics with this because. There's not really any other ways to make money, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was Marlon Esparza I was trying to think uh, of, yeah, by yeah. the way. Uh, but, right. yeah, who's come back really well since she had that defeat to Estrada. But, yeah, if Neri wanted to take uh, take on Esparza, who's also tight, let's do some unification action there, um, and then uh, do some unification at 105 between a Sinisa Estrada and Yacosta Valle. Uh, that's, that, that would be what I would like to see. Uh, and Estrada versus Valle, that would be the best looking way in since Sergio Martinez fought someone that didn't look like a troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be bad at all, actually. Yeah, yeah, so we could... good neck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, don't, don't, uh, don't demiss do your Costa, too. That, that's, no, she's, that's yeah, a good looking she's gal. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and fair play to the Costa Rican female boxing scene as well. You know, uh, obviously, like, I don't know, Hannah Gabriel, she's she's Costa Rican as well, right. Mm -hmm. And that, the good segue there. So Hannah Gabriel's, we got the rematch with Clarissa Shields. It's coming up. Um, she just on... popped up. I think we just it just got canceled today. Are you shitting me? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she's fighting some. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so Dimitri Salida just tweeted it out. Oh I think, god! I think Gabriel's just popped for something. <laughs> Which is not surprising <laughs> when she's like the last time she fought was at 175 and she was fighting for the vacant heavyweight and light heavyweight championship. Oh, I remember that. So there she's jumping down to 160. She's doing like what what Bob Fitzsimmons and, and Roy Jones Jr. thought was too crazy. <laughs> the heavyweight the, back down to middleweight. <laughs> well, thank God, I think it's only 175 pounds in women's box, and they just call yeah. it that. And they're like, we're not doing with the 200 pound division. We don't want to see this. Um, yeah. Unless maybe so, we can get some of the WNBA gals into it, you know, get get a few six four, six five footers in there, you know, th then you yeah. can open up that 200 pound division. I'd like to see some some bulked up WNBA players throwing some uppercuts why not get greener fighting some russian they call it revenge or something yeah you could sell that <laughs> well i tell you so well that's a shame that that one's not happening uh there yeah and you know i, I actually quite like the gabriel is, is is um you know she's not the worst fighter i think um she, she obviously dropped shields in that first round lost every round after that but you know it wouldn't have wouldn't have been the worst fight either for, for, for Shields off the back of the, the, the Savannah Marshall fight, you know? A little pity. <sighs> Man, well, now women's boxing is letting us down too, Joe. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's there's no place for solace. Uh, we cannot hide from it all. But, uh, well, coming up uh, the week after that, though, i uh, got a couple of women's fights on a DAZN card coming from London. That's going to be the uh, Sonny Edwards uh, undercard. I uh, got Nina Hughes against Shannon Courtney uh, for Hughes uh, bantamweight title. Um, and then that could potentially set up a rematch between uh, Courtney and Ebbs uh, in a unification. I don't know what to see about that. So I'm not going to say much at all. Um, a, a fight that I think is going to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, Mr. Kennedy is uh, Sharnika Johnson versus uh, Ellie Scotney. 
now Scotty is a is a good fighter. I I I, I will absolutely say that, but I don't think that Ali and I, Scott and I keep saying it wrong. My apologies. I don't think that she has been in with a fighter at this point in time. And for people who have seen Sharnika Johnson's fight against Susie Ramadan, they know this chicken fight. That was a low down, dirty swinging for the fences fight. Um, and she does have some skill. Don't, uh, don't, don't kid yourself. But I think Scottney could be in deep in this one, and this could be uh, could be a, a, an upset coming up here in a couple of weeks. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm not overly impressed with Scottney from what I've seen so far. I think she's gotten. Uh, I'm trying to remember which fight it was, or she might have gotten the rub of the green. I'm just saying, yeah, it was your own Guanini that fight. I think like there was there was an uproar over that fight that she you know she she'd gotten the decision there. Um, I think people were, were, were saying that she definitely lost that fight and she didn't give the Argentine the, the, the rematch either. So I've I've been kind of looking at Scotney as a possible uh, fade when she kind of stepped up and maybe, maybe that's this fight, um, you know, going from, from, from European to, to, to the IBF. It, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen a whole lot of Trinika Johnson, um, um, but I think that if she has... Um, you know, if 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 she if she brings what she brought to the Ramadan fight, I think she'll have enough to beat Scotty. Yeah, and it's it's a matter, you know, if getting it on the scorecards as well. That's a concern. Uh, but uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it, she is just absolutely rough and tumble, um, and and she doesn't. The one thing that she does pretty well that some of the more wing and punches women uh, do badly is she doesn't step over herself too much she 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 keeps her foot position pretty damn well and and typically that's where these these amateur pedigree uh female fighters are just able to chew up these fighters over 10 twos not a problem but i don't think that scotney's going to have that option this time just a hunch yeah i i you know i i remember betting against scotney in the um fight she had against uh, roman um Roman was a long time uh, world title holder before she got beaten by Ebbs. And I, I remember seeing that fight um, and thinking that Roman would have too much for Scotney. And Roman, when it came down to the fight, just did not have enough. Um, she just didn't work enough to, 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 win, to, win, to win that fight. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't, it wasn't a fight where I, I thought Scotney was head, head and shoulders above this ex champ. It was more of a case of just being too young and too fresh. So, you know, I don't think Johnson is on the slide in that same way that Roman was. Roman's near 40 now. So, yeah, I think, I think, that's, a good, I think that's a good matchup for Johnson. And, and, and yeah, I'll be interested to see what the odds are because um, these UK-based women fighters seem to be just the leading favourite and the heavy favourite off, off the books, just going into them off the back of just being matching fighters. And I just don't... I don't know if I fully, fully think it's merited a lot of the time. Yeah, the uh, the Courtney uh, fight with uh, Bridges was really close with the books on that one. I thought experience might tell on that one, to be fair. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, there have been a few other ones where they, they've really missed them pretty wide over there. Rachel Ball was one I remember for her fight with Courtney that a lot of the asylum guys were on. Um, the other girl who beat... Um, uh, was it Johnson, Michaela Johnson? She was also a big, a big underdog as well. There's been a few. Yeah, that's that is one thing. There is people dismiss some of the talent in, in women's boxing. There, there's these underdogs happen for a reason, and you're coming into your only your your seventh fight here against a, a gal with a, I, I think over twenty fights, uh, over twenty fights under her belt. Uh, it's it's no joke in this one, and yeah. I do believe. That I saw, I uh, on it. I don't have it in front of me, but I thought that I have already seen odds in that uh, you might have been able to pick up Johnson between three and four to one. So nice, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that's not bad as far as a punt goes. Uh, the next week from New Orleans, you'll be able to catch Ramla Ali, I believe, in her first ten rounder, taking on Ulyssa Alejandra Guzman. Uh, also, I don't know if I've seen this gal fight Ginny Fuchs. F U C H S. I hope it's pronounced Fuchs. Is taking on Indea Smith over eight rounds. I thought you said um, Ginny Sachs. 
<laughs> sorry, are, we, are, we on, are you moving on to the heavyweights? <laughs> <laughs> Some of these names, man, they they put me in nothing but trouble. Let's see here. Just moving on up. I thought there was – I know Baumgartner's fight is – there we go. Yep. And then uh, July 15th, uh, going to have Alicia Baumgartner taking on Christine Linardato. Hopefully she can pound mm. some medical over here. Um, uh, try, Alicia trying to get revenge. Linardato, the only uh, gal that had to put a blemish on the record of the bomb. Uh, be an interesting fight, possibly. Uh, I do think that, uh, that Alicia's probably, if you look over the last 18 to 24 months, I'd say that Alicia has been, uh, one of the most, uh, well-developed fighters over that period of time. She's definitely, uh, advanced quite a bit over what she once was under the tutelage of Tony Harrison. Um, so what are you thinking on this one? We're going to get some revenge for Alicia. I think so. I think it's it's well it's 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 well set up to be that way, and I think you're right. I think Baumgartner is probably the most improved fighter over the last two years in the in the female sport. She's shown us not just the the devastating power that she had against Miss um, Harper, but also um, you know she boxed a little bit against against Mayer and, and, and countered off Mayer's work to begin that fight. Um, you remember going into it that. The conventional thinking was that Van Garden would lead and Mayer would, would counter, but it actually turned out the other way for the first six or seven rounds. So I think she's got a few strings in her bow. I think she's probably one of the best coached fighters in the women's game as well. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's it's all set up for, for revenge for for Ben Gardner. But Linda Darcy is now no slouch and she'll want to uh, she want to go in and, and, and repeat the repeat the deed as well. So no that's a good fight. I've got no problems with that at all. I, I like seeing Ben Gardner just operate. She's one of those fighters that I just I go and watch whatever whoever she's fighting. Um, she's she's always entertaining and, and just puts her shots to, shots together really 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 nicely, uh, and develops a little bit over every fight as well. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what she's done in the meantime to the last fight with, with, with Tony. Yeah, she's she's skillful and she has swagger. You know, there there's a reason yeah. that that she gets endorsements yeah. and things like that. It's it's uh, it, it's all about selling yourself at the end of the day, right? She's got that mean streak in her, and she's like that yeah. a lot of fighters have, and she kind of she's not afraid to show that at all. Um, it, it ingratiates it ingratiates yourself to the boxing fans, I think. You know, and with, with the homecoming fight against uh, a woman who uh, who who has defeated her. Uh, she got the hometown fans cheering. I would be shocked to see Alicia pull off a stoppage in this one. I could just see her with really good cardio going into this one and uh, just going all out and taking it to uh, Leonard Datu in this one. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, we'll see about that one. But I uh, wanted to save this one for last. Got a card in Manchester. Got a couple of uh, TBA fights on there. One of them is Natasha Jonas against uh, TBA. She'll be putting uh, her three titles on the line. See what happens there. Uh, but this one I'm looking forward to. Uh, Franchon Cruz Desern was supposed to fight Shadeja Green, which I was stoked for as well. But instead, yeah. taking on Savannah Marshall, um, I don't even know if that's a consolation prize. I almost think that might be a better prize. Well, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, this is going to be an excellent fight. All the marbles at 168 are on the line for this one. Um, I know Savannah wants to get that, maybe entice the quote into coming up and uh, trying to take four titles away from her there. Uh, Fran Sean may be looking for that payday too, but I'll tell you what. Another one of those fights where I think the style matchup is fantastic, Joe, and this one is going to definitely entertain the fans. Yeah, it's a good fight. Um, Cruz Azern is going to probably be the bigger woman in there. Um, certainly been campaigning at that weight a lot longer. Is this first, Savannah's first fight up at 168? I think it's her first like go at a title or something. She might have weighed in somewhere around there for early in her career, but uh, not that yeah. I know. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think we talked about Savannah last time after the uh, off the back of the Shields fight, and I was a little bit critical of her style. I, I just don't find it massively, um, massively nice in the eye. Um, but I'll definitely watch this fight with interest. It's a good fight. Um, and I think it would be a, a really good win for uh, Savannah if she pulled it off as well. 
Um, she's a good fighter, don't get me wrong. You know, st style uh, preference is notwithstanding. Uh, well coached by, uh, by Peter Fury as well. You can see her uh, and him coming up with a good game plan and, and probably doing what it needs to be done to, to beat uh, Cruz Desern, even though Cruz Desern has, has, has a good record, has, has fought some good, good people, gave, gave Shields as good a fight as most as well. Um, I think that um, Marshall, if she's able to um, adjust to the way properly, will probably have um, just one or two more strings in her bow um to, to to be able to be uh cruises or but i think that's a good fight that's not that's 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 no gimme for for, for martial at all I, I can imagine that being pretty close to the books yeah and i i actually expect marshall probably to be a heavy favorite with the books in this one uh but i'm not writing off cruz de Zern. you know even though she didn't uh, pick up the uh stoppage against cedarus she just knocked the crap out of that chick uh absolutely bloodied her up uh, and uh, she's a, she's a real tough gal. She's got a lot of heart. She's not going to be giving up her belts easily. I, I can't see her quitting on her stool. Uh, so this this is going to be. A, I honestly do believe this is going to be right up there with with the good fights that we've been seeing with the best matched against the best. I think that there's kind of some intangibles about Franchon that make this fight closer than uh, people might perceive it as. Uh, but I would definitely say is skill wise, Savannah Marshall has all the advantages. And uh, just so you know, Joe, the last time that Savannah weighed in for a fight, uh, looking in the realm of super middleweight, Ashley Curry, 2019, she was 165 for that fight. And did Marshall campaign previously at 154 before moving over 160, or has she always been a 160 fighter? She's always been bouncing around 160 to 168. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, yeah. So she'll um, it'll be interesting to see uh, yeah, if, if, if that weight does anything. Yeah, and if 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 um, if Cruz is earning as a massive dog on that, I'd probably have a little uh, a little taste, and if it's anything approaching five six to one. Oh yeah, and, and yeah, that one and uh, what one were we talking earlier? Uh, the uh, oh jo Johnson as well. Johnson, I think yeah. both of those are, are worthy punts. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, setting up uh, Marshall is one of the few good knockout punchers in the sport of women's boxing. Um, but that's why if, if she comes out of this victory, Joe, what I'm looking for is is Marshall against Shadeja Green. Shadeja. Mm -hmm. She's a real puncher, huh? Yeah, that girl can punch. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, so I think that... Her shoulders um, are massive, man. That, that, that knockout I seen of her last on the, the zone show, the way she turned her shoulders and stuff, it was truly... You can you can see the power there. Absolutely. And and if I could kind of write the next few months, and, you know, I, I, I love Fran Sean. I, I, I dig that chick. Um, but I think she's going to lose this fight to Marshall. And uh, Shadeja Green took a step aside for this fight to happen, I do believe, in some oh, some well. way. Or or it was planned, and then the sanctioning body jumped in somehow. Weird stuff. But anyways, so I think Savannah Marshall will face Shadeja Green either late this year or early next year. And that could set up Clarissa Shields against Shadeja Green. And I think that's a hell of a fight. And that's what I'm looking forward to in the next 12 months of, of, of women's boxing, maybe a little bit longer, but then that timeline. But I think that's going to happen. Yeah, that would be an interesting one just to, to see if, if, if Shadeja could land on, on the Gloat. Um, yeah, I think, she, I hope Green is the good, you know. it's it's. I'm trying to remember the, the name. Was it the Swedish girl who she knocked out last time around? Yeah, Cedar was the same Cedarus, one, the franchise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, she, 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 Cedar you, you know, no slouch at all. I think she, she'd fought for world titles. Um, but the, the power from Green, she just was not able to live with it at all. And when she got hurt, she was not able, you could see she probably wasn't used to getting hurt like that. She, 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 she was basically just walking straight back into range and should age it absolutely. Flatlined her. Uh, I think they they uh, they, they stopped it towards the end. Um, but the ref had the, to step uh, in. He, the ref stepped in. Yeah, she was in bits. Uh, but she she kept on walking it around. She wasn't like protecting herself at all. You can kind of see that she probably hadn't been in that position too many times before. Um, and I think you know that's probably because there's not many in the women's game with that kind of power either. You know, it's um, 
it, I think the women's sport would do really well to find someone like that, like Green, who who comes onto the scene and just starts really laying people out like we haven't seen before. And yeah, I think I'd be excited for those fights for that reason alone. Well, and I don't know that Shadeja is as good of a puncher as Ann Wolf, but the spotlight on women's boxing is so much bigger and brighter than it was when Ann Wolf was fighting that if she can uh, pull off uh, a KO like uh, Ann pulled off over uh, – uh, yeah. Vonda Ward, I think was her name, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, the tall girl, yeah. It, it yeah. would be, it, it would go viral all over the place, and she yeah. would be an overnight star. And Agreed, if any, yeah. I think if anyone in the sport at this time has that level power, it's probably Shadesia. Um, and, but God, that makes me miss Ann Wolf because <laughs> I, 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 there's a good handful uh, during her prime. There's a good handful of men's boxers that I think I would have taken her against. Like, ah, she'll land on that asshole. She <laughs> uh, I probably Kirkland. I would have paid, <laughs> paid to beat up her husband. You know, <laughs> I think she was scared of James, or James was scared of her. Excuse yeah, me. I, yeah. I don't think he wanted to mess with her. Like, I've seen this chick. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, God, yeah. So hopefully that's what we see here. Cause there's some great talent. Uh, some, uh, and again, green would have to, well, first Marshall has to get through Cruz to Zern, no easy task. Uh, then green has to get through the winner of that. No easy task. But uh, if she manages to do that, she has well earned a fight with, uh, Clarissa Shields, something that could make money. One of the few fights I think that's going to make good money stateside for these women haven't had many uh, chances other than Taylor, Taylor versus Serrano. The money's been kind of kept on that side of the pond. Uh, mm. So just a potential good fight for women's boxing. And I think a Clarissa Shields, Shadeja Green fight that is entertaining is going to bust loose the sport of women's boxing throughout black communities in this country. And that would be fantastic. Um, I'd love to see that happen. Yeah. So, um, Joe, I appreciate you coming on with me today. We've put forth nearly an hour of high quality content for the people. I think they're going to appreciate it. I'm going to thank the ones that are in here real quick before we get out of here. Andrew Thicket, Mr. Junior Malone, uh, Show EMC, Andrew. Oh, Andrew Thicket again. Sorry. Uh, then we got uh, to do uh, Liam Wynn stopped by for a few. Jim McDonald boxing. ABC. And I think we had one more. And the Dr. FMG was in here earlier as well. I appreciate all of you for stepping in and joining Joe Kennedy and myself, Matt DiGiannardo, as we discuss women's boxing. We'll be back with you again in a, probably a few months. Probably wait until that Serrano fight gets wrapped up uh, in early August. And we'll see uh, what this landscape looks like. Talk about the uh, Marshall Cruz Desern fight and uh, if uh, Baumgartner is able to get revenge. Until then, uh, y'all take care of yourselves and we will see you in a couple months.